Right guys, now that we've got the uh, slideways uh, fixed onto the uh, onto the housing and, and doweled in place, we'll, we'll make a start on the uh, on the slide plate, which is going to fit into those uh, into those dovetails. So um, it's going to be a bit of twenty millimeter plate that we're going to use. It's going to come down to um, sixteen mil thick. I may change that. We may thicken it up a little bit. Um, we've got our dovetails that we need to machine in. I haven't done myself any favours here. I, I haven't washed those all the way through. We've got a step that we need to come up to. I wanted the maximum amount of meat that I could on that face to be able to mount the slideways for the uh, for the square round that's going to go into place. So uh, we've got a machine fit uh, to machine into there to mount that uh, those slideways. You can actually see it up there on the on the ISO a little bit better. And in the back end, we've got to machine the recess to be able to fit our nut and some clearance to allow the screw to uh, drop up and down when we're adjusting this up and down for our, our uh, lathe center height or um, sideway cutting for a keyway. Uh, we've also got a small bore that we've got to do in here and that's to access the, uh, the crank pin that we can um, take out and then reposition for a different stroke. A little bit of drilling and tapping and some drilling and counterboring to uh, to happen. So there's a little bit in this bloke. There's quite a lot in it actually. So uh, let's have a look where he's actually going to sit. So you can see that um, that slideway box that's got to be made up. That's going to mount into that slide. I should say the ram box that's going to mount into that slide and obviously slide up and down uh, on the dovetails. So. See a bit of a, a better view of it in there anyway. So there we can see the, the dovetails fitting in with each other, allowing that to move up and down. And then obviously we can lock that in place with those grub screws and that split side on the uh, on the fixed dovetails to lock that off while we're uh, while we're doing our slotting operation. So yeah, like I said, a little bit of work in it. And uh, yeah, once again, a bit of plate that I got from the Scrappos some time ago that I have used for a previous project. There's enough on here, just enough for me to uh, to get that cut up and uh, and machined up to meet the envelope sizes that I'm after. So, all right, guys, we'll uh, we'll make a start on that. As I said, fair bit of work in this, so it's going to take a take a bit of time to work this one through. All right, we'll see you soon. Alright, so we'll just cut this um, back the width on the uh, on the bandsaw. Okay, so we've cut it to uh, width, and uh, now we're cutting it back to uh, length. Have to uh, flip it over and uh, use out a little bit, but not a problem. I'm probably not going to get this in one full cut. I'll have to flip this one over as well and uh, get that final cut thing through. Alright, guys, uh, we'll get started on this. So. Overall length is this has got to come back at um, 149 and the overall width is around about 139 so we'll just get this cleaned up and squared um, and then we've got to bring this thickness back to 16mm I think I may have gone a little bit thicker I'll need to go back to my model just to check that out but we'll get started on this first don't quite have enough stroke and that's the beauty of having a turret mill. We can bring the ram out a little bit. Uh, we come out to there. Make sure we lock it right up. Right. The obviously down the obvious downside with having a turret mill, um, they have an awful lot of flexibility, but uh, you certainly uh, lose a lot of rigidity um, by having um, that, uh, that ram arrangement and, and the head arrangement. As I said, a lot of flexibility, but trade-off is the uh, is the rigidity. All right, that's a that's a nice finish on that actually. So I'll flip that around. We'll show the other side, and then we'll set up to do the uh, 
the uh, the edges. Right, I will just run this across just to see how nice and flat that is. I reckon that's pretty good. Let's just touch them all over. Right, we might uh, undo that, we'll flip that over and we'll start doing the, uh, the other edges now. Right, so sizing on this isn't really critical. Overall heights and overall widths, as long as we machine the dovetails to a neat fit. Um, overall height's not, uh, not a critical dimension, but I do want to get it all very, very square. So... 0 0.015, 0 0.02, so I'm not going to chase that. That's uh, that'll do us nicely. What have you cooked for us? Uh, well, it's not ready, but it's nearly ready. Oh, okay. Um, chicken and veggies. Love it. All right, Righto, guys, we'll um, take the burrs off that, flip it over the other side, and we'll machine it down. All right, but I've got to go inside for tea. All right, guys, I'll catch you soon. Just to check on where we're at with depth. So that's 140.65.
3.80 exactly. That's exactly what I'm aiming for. Yep. Spot on. Right, I'll deburr that. I'll flip it up and we'll finish the uh, oh, right, last side. I'll take half an hour for the time over and then we'll take off this. For 9.07. For 07 of a mil to go. Curiosity's sake, let's just see where that's sitting. One forty eight point nine eight. It's uh, not a critical dimension to tell me the uh, tell me the height. So the way that we're gonna be machining our dovetails in, so well, I'll get that out, we'll clean that up and I'll have a think about whether we do it in the jaws. Through the face, so I clamp it down the table and use my little um, table dogs to hold it down. I've got a fair bit to All right, guys, we'll, um, we'll bring this back to thickness um, because of that little blue we made on the uh, V slides that amount to the housing. I took an extra 0 0.2, 0.3 off the depth when that uh, cutter dropped, so I'm going to make allowances on this and make this another half mil thicker than what the drawing states. So rather than 16, we're going to make this 16.5. Uh, so there's a bit of 20 mil stock. So that means we've got about three and a half mil to take off. So we'll take off roughly half off this side. And we'll take off half the other side. I'm using my little clamp dogs for plate uh, plate clamps for, for locking this down. And these are ideal for these situations where you've got nowhere you can really grip um, uh, and you want to do a facing operation. Um, they do leave marks in, uh, quite deep marks sometimes, depending on how hard you pull them down. But this side here is going to be machined off for our our dovetail so it's not going to be an issue for us so just be aware of that uh, if you are using these leave yourself a little bit of fat to uh, to clean off to take the marks out if you need to um, i'm using a 100 mil diameter cutter here and rule of thumb on these bridge ports is that you shouldn't really use a cutter any bigger than what the spindle diameter is and, and this spindle diameter is about 85 so i'm a touch bigger than that um, they do start to um, drain down on power fairly quickly if you if you put a heavy cut on with the size cutter they're not really built for power these bridge ports so uh, we're only going to take very light cuts going across here um, normally you would try and have the cutter running across the face so that the cut um, is pushing into the dogs as it goes through but I haven't quite got it's a bit of a pain with the traverse this way so we're just going to take very light cuts traveling this way just being aware that it is going to try and push the plate out towards the um, out towards the column all right We'll take uh, half a mil off first and we'll just see how that uh, how that travels for us.
it's just cutting as I said a very small un onion ring cut as it comes back just because the head's not quite uh, trammed it's uh, maybe a couple of tenths out but it's leaving a beautiful finish so that will be my direction of cut for my finishing You can see the transition, but I can't really feel that at all. That's that's a yeah. I can't feel a transition at all. You can certainly see the different machining faces. Matter of fact, you can see the crossover as it's come onto that other surface. So yeah, no, it's pretty fun. feel a transition on that well, I can feel the surface finish but no real no real transition so that's great um, I don't really have any allegiance to any particular cutters I, I just work with with what works best at the time um, um, these particular cutters here are, are these units here that the focus so this EHW so this has eight inserts in it um, and this is a beautiful facing. I got this out of Poland. I got it for just over 100 Australian. Um, yeah, beautiful, beautiful cutter. Great for uh, great for facing. It's the the big brother to that one there. And when they're on song, they they cut beautifully. And look, another important thing to know is the little idiosyncrasies of your machine. How it cuts, where it cuts well. Um, how best to set up to to suit those little idiosyncrasies to get the best result that you can on your uh, on your machine so I have worked with old Lowe's old Maxims we had to hold the, the tool post back by hand when we were doing the last cuts so yeah you know, a good operator might have sat on his uh, on his lathe for 20 years and uh, regardless you get somebody else to go on it he, he wouldn't come up with the same results that the guy has been working on it for 20 years because he knows that machine so well what it can and what it can't do and uh, what it can't do how to make it do it <laughs> so um, all right so I'm really happy with that surface finish. That's that's come up an absolute treat. We'll flip this over, bring this down to size, and then we're going to cut a little perimeter step down where we're going to mill our dovetails into. All right, so I'll break this set up, clean the table down, we'll flip it over and clamp it up again. All right, guys, just setting up the uh, slide plate to uh, machine the step down, the initial step down for the uh, dovetails to run into. So. I've just set this up with my tenons in the in the T-slots there and push it up against it. And uh, sometimes I find it's good just to come back and just check and make sure that those tenons are still doing what they're supposed to be doing. So I set that on zero. <laughs> Just the dial flickering around a little bit there, so I'm happy with that. Zero, zero. So I'll, I'll set a milling cutter up and we'll start doing the step downs on each side. Then we'll set it up in the uh, on the um, angle table, and uh, we'll start uh, cutting those uh, those dovetails. All right, back in the tick. Right, right we're going to cut the two step downs down. So. I'm going to rough this out, leaving about a millimetre on the uh, on the bottom and uh, about a millimetre on the side to, uh, to remove on that. Down about 2 mil. Work it up at that. Speed into it.
I'll set this up, we'll cut the other side and we'll bring you back when we're setting the, uh, the table up for the angulation. You can, you can see the marks that those little table clamps leave in the metal. Uh, they're certainly there, so they're going to machine out. Alright, as I said, we'll, uh, we'll bring you back when we're going to, just as the rain starts again. Um, we'll bring you back when we're going to set, set, this, uh, set this angle table up. Right guys, so this is the uh, setup we've got. Um, this is my homemade um, angle plate. Um, we've got our slide plate set up on here and I've set up a fence that I've zeroed out and I've dropped our, our plate down onto it just using that edge there as a data because we're gonna need to turn this around and we're gonna need a constant edge to come back to as we're bringing this down to the uh, 60 degrees to match into the dovetail on that, uh, on that housing set. So I've rotated this around 60 degrees to the normal. And, well, I'll show you how I've done that in a minute. Um, what I've also done is I've gone ahead and clocked this up again. And I'll just bring you up a little bit closer, hopefully. I can see that. Let's try and zoom it in if it'll... It's gonna zoom in. Not too bad. So if I run that up and down, Needle, needle flicker. Now we're about 0.01. So what I've done is I've also done the, the bottom side down here. So I've done the bottom side and done that up there as well. And that's slightly out. The whole thing's out by about 0.02 of a mil. So around about 7 tenths of a thou. So I've split the difference. So I've got 0.1 mil out here. When I turn it around, I've got 0.1 mil out the other way so I've sort of just juggled that around a little bit to get as close as we can. I don't know one day which way I've got to zoom this thing. It's not the greatest camera in the world. Right. So I'll just go through how I've set up the um, the angle and I'm sure the purists are gonna scream at me for doing it this way but I'm very confident with it, so we'll just uh, we'll just come around and have a look. So I don't know if you can see that, but that's reading zero, zero on the table. And when I set it up here, all right, I'll come up and have a look at that. Just a little bit higher. And I'll bring it over. I don't know if you can read that, but that's reading zero. That's reading uh, 60.0. Now, I could have set this up with a sign bar. I could have squared it all up, set it up, brought it back, clamped it down with the gauge box, and then clocked the vertical face. But I've checked this little gauge here with the sign bar in the past, and there's maybe eight or nine tenths of a thou between 0 0.0 and 0 0.1 either way. So it's very, very close and I'm very confident that that's going to work out nicely. So that's my little sign bar I've had for many years and it's done a, a lot of work when I was in the trade. All right. So I'm very happy with that. I'm going to set up our tooling now and we'll get, uh, we'll get set up and get ready to, uh, to machine this. Right, just like that on the CAD. From touching the corner, which I'm just off it at the moment, I've got to come down exactly 6 mil. So we'll come down probably about 5.75 and then we'll flip it over and we'll do the other side. And then we'll just do a trial and error to get that to fit into the uh, in the dovetails in the housing. <laughs> so I'll take 3 mil off and we'll see how that goes.
Right, so we've got another quarter of a mil. Just make sure that that's gonna... That's fine. What I'll do, Boo, that, flip that over and we'll start milling the other side and just bring it down slowly after that. I'm sort of suspecting the last little bits of this to fit into the dovetail, I'll, um, I'll need to hone it. Alright, we'll be back in a minute. Alright, we'll start the second side now that we've got that all cleaned up. You can see how important that, um, that fence is to come down onto that registered face. So that's going to allow me to just take off an even amount each time until we get the dovetails fitting. Deburr that and just give that a bit of a trial. I'm still a fair ways off, but uh, I'd rather sneak up on it slowly than overshooting it. So I'll bring you back with the results and what we're doing next. All right, so I'll take another quarter of a mil of this and we'll just give it a go. We'll bring it back to the same same number as this. So I'll bring it right across to this side. It's, uh, it's hoping it leaves a burr in there. guys I might bring you back when we're getting closer to this because my plan is to keep turning this over making sure we take an even amount off each side until I start getting a nice sliding fit up inside those dovetails so I'll bring you back when we're getting uh, getting close this is going to be a, a little bit laborious doing this so I'll bring you back when we're right, uh, we just got this um, sitting in here now and that is A nice sliding fit now, it's getting a little bit looser now, which is good. But I'll take, take it out. So I've just given each of these edges. Just a very light hone, and uh, yeah, it's worked out really well. It's a, it's not a firm sliding fit. It's it still takes a bit of resistance, but 
as you can see there, that's a really nice fit. And I've got that very even either side. So within, uh, yeah, about 0.01 of a mil. So yeah, really happy with that. Right, so the next job we've got to do on this is do the uh, relief cutout in the back for the nut that we're going to fit in there for actuating that up and down. Once we've got that zeroed up or centered up, then we can then work out where we're going to put our, uh, our hole for the screw to come through and to lock off. Uh, remember in the back of this too, I'm going to cut a little relief just so we clear that crank pin as that goes around. And then we've got all of the milling that we've got to do here on the face to, uh, to mount that, um, that slide box for the ram. So a fair bit of work to do on this thing yet. It's getting a little bit easier now, but there is absolutely no play in that whatsoever. So I think once we get that slip cut down there, we'll get those um, grub screws in there to lock that off, that's, uh, that's going to be brilliant. All right guys, so the next setup as I said is going to be for the um, for doing the nut in the back. So we've got, a, we've got a fair bit of milling to do on that. So it's a fairly awkward shape we've got to cut into there. So uh, we'll see you then. All right, thanks guys.